in the context of food mixing. So even if we have the right composition of ingredients and flavors, a great recipe will not transform into good food unless the components are well mixed. Why do we employ mixing in, in the food industry? Well, mixing is employed in the food industry, not only to combine the in ingredients, but also to modify the structure of foods, develop texture, and influence the sensory characteristics of the products. Well, before we understand mixing, let us understand what is poor mixing. So poor mixing is basically a non-homogeneous product that lacks consistency in composition, color, flavor, texture, reactivity when it comes to chemical reactions. And poor mixing can lead to rejection of batches and loss of high value of products. It is estimated that the cost of poor mixing is US dollars 100 million per year. And these numbers are dated five years back. So I'm not sure about the numbers now, but I'm, I'm definitely sure that they will be much, much higher than what they were five years back. What are the reasons for poor mixing? Well, inadequate and inaccurate definition of mixing objectives. We need to clearly define what are the objectives of mixing in the process. Is it to get a uniform color, a uniform composition, a uniform texture, or to modify any of the parameters? There is a lack of understanding of the material characteristics. Materials that we handle could be solids, liquids, high viscosity. When we mix solids and liquids, the material may behave differently. So understanding the material characteristics is a very important part in the mixing process. Incorrect selection of mixer. While we know the process, we may not be sure about the type of mixer which will be best suited. So very often we end up making a choice of the mixer based on what is availability available with us instead of looking at what would be the optimum mixing equipment. Incorrect scale up techniques. Often we are able to develop the products at the lab scale, but to scale them up at the production level and to still get the same results, that is a challenge that mixing engineers generally face. Above all, there is limited knowledge on mixing equipment design and the parameters. I can assure you that by the end of this presentation, all of the participants here would at least have overcome any limitations that they have in knowledge. We would be completely equipped to handle any mixing application that we are presented with. At this point, I would also like to insist because we have some business owners. So a mixer is no longer a generic production tool, but it is a decisive and critical business tool. The quality of the product you produce will decide on the value of the product. And, and we look at one case study where how the quality of mixing drastically increased the product value. Most of all, it is to be understood that while mixing has an element of science, mixing is also an art. So it has to be viewed as an art and a science both. Well, as we said, it's a critical and a decisive business tool. So profitability through mixing, that's what business owners should be looking at. And we will share a case study, though it's not uh, related to the food industry, but it is related to a polymer industry where the products can be extremely high value. And uh, this is for a polymer company who had a product purity, which was at 90%. And that was an acceptable norm then. And this product in the market could be sold at $45,000 per ton. The company had a customer requirement where the product purity had to be increased from 90 to 95%. And the value that they would derive would be $50,000 per ton. That's an increase of $5,000 per ton. The volume that the company actually produced and was able to sell was 55,000 tons a year. So the incremental benefit of 5,000 tons per year multiply by 55,000 tons, the profitability can, can only be imagined. The number of zeros that you need to have, somebody has to actually calculate. So you can actually make your business profitable by choosing the right mixer 
concentrating on your mixing process and improving the quality of your product. In today's scenario, profitability and competitive advantage are dependent on subtle improvements in product quality through gains in mixing performance and efficiency. Well, this case study is an actual case study and we had worked with this company to get the desired product purity. Let's look specifically at the food industry now. And uh, as Michael Pollan puts it, perhaps more than any other, the food industry is very sensitive to the consumer demand. Consumers today demand a healthier product. They demand products which are, say, free from gluten, sugar-free products. The new trend is clean labels, where products tend to be naturally derived without any genetic modification. They are minimally processed and organic, Present. and they do not Present. contain any artificial ingredients. So the food industry has to meet these consumer demands and has to be equipped to meet these consumer demands. The challenges that the food industry, well, a lot of you are from the food industry, you would know the challenges better. We'll just run through them. Bringing products to the market quickly. You need to be fast in today's world. Scaling up recipes, manufacturing at large scale. You could do that, you the things in the lab scale, but to scale it up is definitely a challenge. Standing out in increasingly competitive markets. Well, the lockdown has showed how many new industries have actually cropped up as a result of this. And food is one major industry where there has been a transformation in this period. Staying compliant with a large number of regulations. Maintaining best practices for storing, packaging, preserving, and distributing products. Above all, there are margin pressures. Challenges 2020, yeah, challenges in the COVID environment. Managing supply chain disruption, shortage of workforce, employee safety and productivity, that's become extremely critical. Ensuring food safety, well, that was always the case. Uh, but it's important in today's time that the safety of food has to be maintained from production to consumption, and that becomes the responsibility of the food manufacturing company. Above all, social media and brand reputation do put their pressure on the industry. Let's specifically look at the mixing challenges that we have in the food industry. A lot of materials can have complex rheology. That can be a big challenge. The effects of mixing on final product texture and sensory profiles need need to be carefully studied. Sanitary and hygienic designs. A need for continuous processing. You could do production in batch. There could be processes which require a continuous processing. Food safety, as we discussed, is always a challenge. Let's look at the typical food groups that we have. Breads, breakfast foods, chocolates, condiments, dairy products, fermented foods, food ingredients, meat foods, pet foods, sauces, snack foods, soups, and vegetable foods. Well, when we talk about applications and we need to classify the applications in terms of the material characteristics, we could have dry powders, we could have batters, we could have doves, we could be handling viscous liquids, slurries, thick pastes. We could have applications where mixing and cooking has to happen together. We could have applications where solids and liquids are to be mixed together. And we could have powder dispersions in liquids. There could be other applications, but broadly, these are the application classifications. And then we have a gamut of food mixing equipment. So you could be using ribbon and paddle blenders, plowshare mixers, V and double cone blenders, Sigma mixers, Sigma mixer extruders, single and double planetary mixers, inline static mixers, single and multi shaft turbine mixers, high shear mixers, stirred cooking kettles, continuous processors and extruders. 
So, so you look at the variety of mixing equipment, and then you look at the mixing applications, and you look at the different materials. So, definitely, that's it's a challenge that the industry is posed with on how do you choose the best mixing equipment for the application. And as we delve further into the subject, we will be discussing that. And so, our first classification of mixers was liquid, solid, and high viscosity. Besides these, there are there are other special mixers which are used in the food industry depending on the applications. So there is a contra rotating ketal mixers. You could have roller bar type dow mixers. You could have high speed dow mixers as you see in the image to the right. Something called as tweedy mixers, box style mixers, tumble coating plants, static mixers or inline mixers, and single and twin screw extruders. So again, these equipment are also employed in the mixing industry for very, very specific applications. Well, when you talk about mixing equipment, uh, you also need to talk about sanitary design of mixers. Extremely, extremely important, uh, more so in the, uh, in the present uh, times where regulations are uh, critical and uh, uh, mixers need to be safe to operate and they need to comply with the principle of sanitary design. The materials and the consumables that we use to build mixers should be compliant with the relevant food grade standards. Mixing blades should be of sanity design, well polished, and should be smooth curves. The mixing internals should be accessible for operations, for cleaning, for inspection and maintenance. The mixer must be cleanable with proper drainage and good clearances and accesses, loading, unloading, moment of collection equipment. So it's a separate topic by itself, sanitary design of mixers, but you know, these are the broad principles or the guidelines that we need to follow while designing sanitary mixers. So, as they say, the uh, the end result, you know, I mean, we started so much of mixing applications, so many mixers, so many, you know, uh, theories. Um, let's come to the selection of mixing equipment. How, uh, whatever we we learned in the last, uh, uh, say, around uh, one hour fifteen minutes, uh, has to kind of conclude with with a selection of the mixers for the different applications. So when it comes to biscuits and crackers and the materials dove like, we use the high speed dove mixers. Bread love, which is again a dove, the Sigma mixer and the roller bar mixers are used. Soft doves for pastries, use the single planetary mixer. When it comes to cereals, which are dry solids and are fragile, we use the ribbon platter blender a combination of ribbon and paddle, or we could be using the tumbler blenders, the bee blender or the double cone blender. Uh, cocoa processing, when you are handling thick paste, say, for example, you're making a chocolate mix, um, a viscous chocolate mix, you could be using special chocolate conching machines or the plowshare mixers. Uh, dry powder premixes, seasonings, we can deploy the ribbon paddle blender when you are handling dry and solid powders. And the tumbler blenders when we talk about fragile dry solids. For ketchups and salad dressings, the high shear box mixer or the static mixers, they can be used. Well, uh, uh, for storage of milk, uh, you use the, the side entering or the top entering liquid mixers. For fermented beverages, again, we could be using the liquid impellers. Uh, for mixing of flour with other ingredients, uh, ribbon and paddle blenders, tumble blenders, and silo blenders. These are dry powder applications. For grains, again, ribbon and paddle blenders and silo blenders, uh, especially in, in the grains, you could have, you know, uh, large scale mixing, bulk mixing. So you can use the silo blenders here. Starches and gums, you use the high shear mixer, the batch powder, uh, with addition of liquids, 
You could be using the inline rotor stator mixers for powder dispersion in liquids. For pet foods, again, dry solids, so you can use the ribbon and paddle blenders. And uh, when it's viscous liquids and slurries or, or viscous paste, then you could use the continuous extruders. Hot sauces, spaghetti sauces, well, the stirred kettles, cooking vessels, something like the contra rotating mixer. Cream sauces, we could be using the contra rotating mixers because the material is in the liquid, slurry, or you know, like viscous solids. Candies, we very commonly use a sigma mixer because you know the mix is viscous as well as elastic. Chips, the ribbon paddle blender, again for dry, dry solids. Extruders uh, for paste. For cookie doves, we can use the planetary mixer. Peanut butter, the contra rotating mixer, the continuous extruder. Again, vegetable oils uh, for uh, liquid storage. You could use the liquid impellers and the side entering mixers.